turn now on one of the biggest talents in modern opera, whose voice has been heard in the convention city and far beyond. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The time is 6.30 and the call is half hour. 30 minutes to the top of Act 1. James Morris is being transformed into the evil police chief, Scarpia, for the San Diego opera production of Tosca. The thing I love about Scarpia, too, that this opera portraying his character is that he's a real-life person. You can fall back on every uh, movie you've ever, ever seen about corrupt police chiefs and Nazi generals. <laughs> Portraying Scarpia vocally and theatrically is a proving ground for any bass baritone. I love the more physical roles the better uh, because I think it's so boring just to see somebody standing around in one place all night singing. I mean, you might as well just go to a concert. And to me, opera is theater. When people go to the opera, they expect to see good theater on stage, and they should. And most operas lend themselves to that. Certainly Tosca does. Morris jokes that he gets to die a wonderful death, and it happens in the second act so that he can go home early. Home for James Morris is in New Jersey with his wife, mezzo-soprano Susan Quitmeyer. And are you good critics for each other? Yeah, we always, uh, whenever she gives me a criticism, I usually bristle at first, and then two no, days later, better. two days later, I think, yeah, you know, what, what you said, that was really good, and yeah. I'm grateful. <laughs> James Morris was born in Baltimore, Maryland, 48 years ago, and he studied at the Peabody Conservatory. When he was just 23, he became the youngest male singer to join the Metropolitan Opera. Like all beginning bass singers, he started by playing old men. His first major success was in the title role of Don Giovanni. It's astonishing to think you were 23 years old making your debut at the moment. Some people would say the younger you start, the younger you finish. So, <laughs> so hopefully that's not going to be the case. What do you think is um, so very special about Jim's voice? <laughs> Jim's voice, uh, one thing, it is so powerful, but along with being so incredibly powerful, he can also sing very lyrically, very quietly, and it is so beautiful. It really is such a beautiful bass voice, and not all basses have this beauty. And Thank you. <laughs> and it, it is very true. It really, I'm not just saying it because everyone feels that way. If there's one role that defines James Morris and that James Morris defines, it is Wotan, ruler of the gods in Wagner's ring cycle. People have been after me for years to undertake Wotan. And to me at the time, Wagner just seemed so boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I thought, oh, God, Wagner is so long, and it's so slow, and it's so heavy. Luckily, that view didn't last, and he has become the world's Votan of choice. This fall, he was in Chicago for the Lyric Opera's production of The Ring. He has so much metal, as they say in the professional language, so many overtones, so many different colors, 
and he is in complete control. The conductor was Zubin Mehta. It's not a thing that like what comes out comes out. He knows what he's doing all the time. One always says, well, after this great Bhutan passes on, who, there's nobody else. Thank God today there's James Bond. Surprisingly, Morris has never performed the ring cycle in Bayreuth, Germany, where Wagner had a home and which has become a mecca for his operas. Morris was invited to Bayreuth once, eight years ago, but he had already committed to spending the summer in Santa Fe. He chose to honor that commitment. I've heard rumors through the grapevine. I think the people in Bayreuth were offended that I had the audacity to turn them down. I'm, I'm sure one day I'll sing there, but uh, it would be interesting. But uh, it's not something that uh, I would feel unfulfilled if it didn't happen, but it would be great if it did. So. <laughs> James Morris doesn't seem to worry about much, at least not while pursuing his favorite pastime in his favorite place in the world, Guam Lake in New Hampshire. He's certainly not overly protective of his voice. I don't worry about it probably as much as I should. <laughs> there are some opera singers that are very frantic about their voices. Oh, you'll see them walking down the street in the dead of summer with a scarf around their neck. Oh, here we go, a little nibble. I mean, you have to live. You have to have a life. You can't sit in the corner and fold your hands and say, I'm an opera singer, and let the rest of the world pass you by. Bad, but, it's not great. but sometimes, for a brief moment, it is nice to let the world pass you by. But it was a brief moment. Nothing subtle about this character. <laughs> when you are one of the world's leading bass baritones, it's hard to hang up a sign that says gone fishing. What is it that opera gives to you? I guess fantasy. <laughs> Um, you get to do things in opera, you get to do things on stage that you couldn't do in real life.